Well, it's another beautiful morning. Day 11 of the training. We got some low flying aircraft. Foot drag. with you know a dozen or so flights under the belt the students are grasping the basic skills and getting more proficient and confident in at least taking off landing coming in for the landing you know planning it out and the instructors give less and less input so basically you learn to be more self-sufficient on your own and hopefully it becomes more fun rather than kind of you know, that nervous, tense feeling, your body gets all sore. <laughs> so, you know, the more you fly, the kind of, the more you enjoy it, I think. Because the first few flights, you're just hold, kind of holding on, you know. Be really careful, as you should. But as you learn to trust your aircraft and trust yourself, it becomes a little more fun and you can uh, practice more advanced skills. And basically gain experience but this you know initial learning curve that's where you're gonna make the little mistakes it's unavoidable and uh, hopefully improve and learn from those so get out on the flying field and enjoy more consistent so this is what happens when your airspeed is equal to the wind speed you just hang in the air in one spot even though it feels like you're flying forward and to solve that problem the wing has a feature called trimmers which you can uh, you know trimmers out the trailing edge will come up a little bit and the wind will penetrate that air a little more and it depends on the wing this is a beginner wing so it's slower than the intermediate so for the lighter guys when if you don't pull the trimmers let the trimmers out you'll just hang in the air or even get blown backwards trimmers out trimmers in trimmers out with your thumb in out in push it out push it out out. 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 All the way. All the way. Okay, good. Okay. Now, trimmers neutral. Neutral. In the middle. Uh huh. Okay. Trimmers neutral. In the middle. Okay. Arms to the nipples. Ready to go? You ready to fly? Okay. Arms to the nipples. Nipples. So as you can see, you know, he had the first lane to take off was super smooth. So then the instructor says, now you're on your own. And if you don't have those radio prompts, you might go a little too fast in the sequence and not finish one step before starting the next step. 
and that can get you into trouble pretty quickly. So um, you have to keep a very clear head and think things through. Make sure your wing is up all the way first. Then push, you know, power to the motor. Then lift for, um, you know, put pressure on and take off. That wing doesn't come up. And you give it full power. You're basically inflating <laughs> the wing backwards. It's pulling you back and you're not going to fly. You're just going to fight yourself and could get in a bad situation. Okay, now left, line up with me. Come to me. There you go. Get out of the seat. Get out of the seat. Kill the motor. Kill the motor. Kill the motor. Kill the motor. Hands up. Hands up. Hands up. Hands up. And wait. Wait. Pressure. All the way down. All the way down. Beautiful. Wow. Got some oscillations going there, but nice motor. job. So, two flights and definitely feeling more in control of the, uh, the paraglider. So, the more you can dial it in, the, the more confidence you can feel and just be, just have a better time in the air. So on those landings, I still have to get the wind direction right a little better and dial it right in so everything's lined up. If you're turning before the landing, then you have to compensate, and then you have to pull the brakes kind of unevenly, and you know you can still get down on your feet, but it just doesn't look as classy. But again, it teaches you this <laughs> how to how to steer when things don't go perfectly. But overall, uh, you know this is I guess the full th third full session of flying. It's really you know building. The skills are getting a little more not polished, but. Um, <laughs> refined I guess it's a uh, it, it's really a cool experience hey everyone welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics we're at the field and we're taking a look at this beast 2017 Dodge Ram or just Ram 2500 Cummins and the owner here Chris he 
he missed the day of flying because this thing crapped out, huh? Second time, too. All right, so, so what's the story? The first time? So the first time uh, I was driving down here and uh, battery voltage warning came up. Thought maybe mm -hmm. I just had a bad battery or something. Next thing I see, it keeps dropping uh, down to below eight. Okay. That's when things got a little hairy. All my warnings started popping up. Uh, actually, almost shut down completely. Wow. Came back. Luckily, made it to my parents, but then got the alternator replaced. Okay. And that one went out again. So it was less than a week. Less than a week, yeah. And it was brand new at the dealer, right? Yeah. yeah. OEM. Yeah. The first alternator had seventy-eight thousand miles on it, with some snow plowing and towing, but mm -hmm. nothing more than that. So. All right. So now it's on its third alternator, and that guy lives right here, nice yep. shiny and new. And I told Chris that new stands for N-E-W, never ever works, especially since it's a Chrysler dealership, you know? <laughs> so what I wanna do now is just plug in the launch scanner, do a health check on this thing, and maybe look up the basics on the charging system and make sure the dealership wasn't overlooking anything because it shouldn't be eating alternators, you know, every week. Getting a little more details from the customer, he said <laughs> the first alternator, when it crapped out, you know, the voltage started dropping, but then it came back to the 13 volts. Yeah. For how long? So I was uh, driving probably about 30 minutes on that initial time where all the warnings started to pop up. Uh -huh. And then it was below, it was showing below 8 voltage there. And that's when all of a sudden I wasn't accelerating, the throttle wasn't giving me anything. I started just going off to get off the side of the road. Uh -huh. Next thing I know, the throttle responds again, back uh -huh. up to 13 volts. So you have a little voltmeter? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and how long did it stay good? So probably until I got to my parents, which would have been about another hour or so. Huh. So yeah. It was, it. Then it was good all the well, way to... No, so then it kept going down. So then when I got to my parents, I put the batteries just on chargers to charge okay. them up and went straight to the dealership. With I gotcha. All right, so you had one episode, like half an hour, where the voltage is dropping, mm -hmm. right? Then it recovered. Yeah. And then, then you just got... Th yeah. Then it actually started going down again. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then you made it home. Yeah. Okay, okay, so almost an intermittent problem, but... But the new alternator, once it quit, it quit, right? Yeah, that one just quit, and then nothing did come back. Okay. Alright, let's uh, fire up the launch here. Got the OBD connector plugged in. Diagnose. Let's go right for a Chrysler. So the dash here looks... Kind of similar to a Jeep Grand Cherokee. You got your uh, info sys, uh, info screen there. Seventy, almost seventy-nine thousand miles. That's putting on those miles. So automatically search. See how long this takes. So my snap on the Varus is only updated till. It's like 17.2, so it might not even recognize the new truck. That's why we're using the launch. And it says there's the VIN 2017 Ram 2500. This is correct, yes. And let's just do a health report. So push button start. Uh, I think it says press brake and push button to start. So yeah, accessory run. It's going. PCM four, four codes in the PCM. Interesting. So we'll let it scan and do a health report. All right, so we got a whole bunch of codes. So we'll just hit fault report. And report, confirm, save. It saves it in, in the scanner. Okay, so here we go. So we got a 060C, internal control module, main processor performance, 884, power up at speed, generator field control circuit high, uh-oh, 2509, ECM engine control, power input signal intermittent. 
All right, ABS, system voltage circuit below threshold, that's obvious. Ignition unlock, run start, control circuit short to ground. Below threshold, short to ground. System voltage signal below allowable range. Um, let's see, communication code in the radio. <clears throat> Again, voltage code there and there. So basically, the voltage dropping too low set a whole bunch of codes in all of these modules. Man, I, this is like a Mercedes. <laughs> so all the all the modules have <laughs> codes in them apparently. Uh, there's three three modules that are normal, and eleven modules that have codes. So wh where do we go from here? Well, I want to take a look at the description and operation for this charging system and look up some of these codes on all data. See if we can get some in good information on them, and see if there's anything else to be causing this. You know. Can we blame the alternator right away? All right, first relevant code here is the P0626 generator field control circuit high. Theory of operation. This is the gold information here. We have to pay attention. There are two communication lines between the power train control, control module PCM and generator. Based on sensed battery voltage, the PCM commands the generator to charge the batteries to a desired voltage. The max voltage the PCM will command the generator to charge is 14.75 volts. The PCM then receives feedback from the alternator on the voltage level it is charging the batteries through a sense line. The PCM will not light a mill lamp for this fault. Okay, it's monitored when the ignition is on. Second condition, the PCM detects that the K20 generator field control circuit is open or shorted to voltage. Very interesting. Possible causes, generator field control circuit short to voltage, high resistance, generator, or PCM. Okay, so active DTC, did the DTC reset, check the K20 generator field control circuit for short to voltage. <clears throat> so ignition off, disconnect the PCM C1 connector, turn ignition on, measure the voltage on the K20 generator field control circuit at the generator harness connector. Is there any voltage present? So we need to find a wiring diagram. And see where that circuit is in the easiest place to check it. So let me find the diagram for this thing and go from there. Okay, so here's the wiring diagram of the charging system. And here's the powertrain control module. So we have powers and grounds, and then generator, right there, gen sense and gen field control, the K20 circuit is that brown and gray wire. And then there's the battery, and you get the straight, the fat red wire connecting to the battery. Now, there's another generator here, and I don't know why this thing has two could it have two alternators potentially? It doesn't say alternator one, alternator two. And the A uh, comes from right here. So it looks like this thing could have two alternators and two control circuits. Gen output signal, gen field control, and then gen sense. I'm not exactly sure why this diagram is showing two alternators. All right, we got some live data pulled up. Alternator voltage, battery voltage, bus battery voltage, electronic voltage regulator driver duty cycle. Right there, that's key. And then the electronic voltage regulator set point. So let's let's start it up and see what it does. Clear prop. I'm going to start the engine just so you guys know. Why is it not starting? Press brake and push button to start. There we go. 
All right, let's see what this, so electronic voltage regulator, driver duty cycle, ramping it up. Now it's about 50%. Just gonna go up and down, up and down to keep this electronic voltage regulator set point at 13.8. So we're gonna turn on the lights, turn on some accessories, like rear defrost, AC, I rev it up, it's gonna drop a little bit since the alternator is spinning faster, so everything's working right now, everything's fine. The owner said that, uh, I think he had a mouse living under the hood, it didn't do any wiring damage, um, chewed up some foam or the insulation on the hood, but who knows, they could have done something else, but just, you know, when everything's working fine, new part gets replaced, or, you know, part fails, supposedly, they put on a new alternator, it's fine for almost a week. And then it fails in the same way that kind of, you know, what are the chances of that happening? Well, can't really say. So what I want to do is a quick experiment. First, let's clear all the codes out. Just do a fresh start here. Okay. Accessory. And then we'll run the truck, look at the data, and unplug the control wires at the alternator and see what codes it sets just to kind of get an idea of what the the voltages are and then we can with a test light maybe you know short that wire to voltage or to ground and see what the computer says when these faults occur because we want to reproduce the problem if it's there or at least attempt to and learn more about the system so in the active test menu, they actually have an alternator test and alternator one and two, one and two, one passed, one test run, and then there is no second alternator, so obviously that one's, you know, test is not run. So I don't know what that did, but it says the alternator is good. Let's just go back to live data, data stream. And again, we have to pick out our desired PIDs, and there's like 100 of them, so I'm going to scroll through, pick them out, and we'll do the test. Actually, the launch was nice enough to preserve our data, so we're going to just look at that, and let's jump under the hood and unplug that control wire and see what codes we set, and see what the alternator does. So we're gonna look at our voltages. I'm gonna reach down here and unplug the main control wire for this alternator. Has a little red tab on it. That thing needs to be pulled back first. There we go. Now push and unclip. See what happens. So default. The uh, duty cycle goes to zero, but our voltage stays at 13. Our alternator voltage is 12.5. So now the battery is going to start getting depleted since we're not charging. And let's see what happened inside the uh, on the cluster. Okay, the little battery light is on down there. Our voltage is dropping slowly. So I want to check what the codes are now. Come on. Come on. Read fault code. Okay, so again, we have a P0626 and a P063C generator voltage sense low. So we didn't have that code before, but we did have the generator field control circuit high. All right, so that code, just by unplugging that control wire tells me, hey, this code means open circuit, not necessarily short to voltage. So is there a possibility of an intermittently broken wire? Yeah, I mean, if it drove around for a week and it, nothing happened, probably not, but we should still do the Keith tug test and a wiggle check 
and just monitor what these uh, what the voltage does but other than that it could just be a defective alternator all right alternators plugged right back in I checked the pins the pins look fine so let's just clear these codes out one more time your fault code yes okay read fault code no DTCs and data stream still have the same data which is nice let's fire it up so the electronic voltage regulator is ramping up and our voltage is going up so everything's working as it should right now, no issues. All right, well, this is pretty uneventful. Seems to be running fine, no issues. So this truck only has one alternator, but two batteries. And the uh, non-OEM color diagram is actually a little easier to understand. It has both batteries on here. They're just tied together. There's no isolator or you know anything fancy here there's it's just for extra capacity and then it does show if it did have two alternators then you would have these two units but it just has one and the colors match up red violet brown and gray and that's the generator sense and generator field control so sometimes that's the way it goes I mean this is just kind of a hey is anything you know can we find anything else wrong other than a defective alternator but Hopefully this third one lasts them longer than a week. Thanks all for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.